got this stuff at home. But I can't do that. Yeah. Um, this is one millimeter foam, obviously. No, no, this is two millimeter foam, I believe. Uh, I make a template like, like that. And when I cut it, I tend to cut it a little bit outside the confines of the template, just a little bit. Uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or thirty second of an inch. Seems to work out fine. This is it's three it's one inch long. The the template itself is, is actually one inch long and three eighths inch wide. Um, I'm sure that's you, you can make it any size you want, you know. But that's what the the pattern called for. So anyway. Let me grab a hook. What is this just like the Walmart phone that comes in the big package? It is, yeah. I've, I've done a, I had, I have a, I've yeah. got a big stack of those, yeah, $5. I have some of the, uh, I've bought some of the fly tying foams before, and frankly, I I don't know if there's a difference. It, uh, it's just cut smaller and charge more for it. Yeah. That's the only thing I could see. Well, there's one other thing. You seem to have more color options at Hobby Lobby than you do at uh, Orvis. You know, uh, for these small flies, I would probably you can buy actually buy uh, one millimeter. This is th this is two millimeter and three millimeter uh, foam that you get at Hobby Lobby. You can find one millimeter online, but again, you can't get the uh, color options you know you they have subdued colors you know the tans and the browns and, and the greens and stuff but they don't have the bright colors all right well anyway let's start just start your, your uh, thread right behind the eye and work your way back <clears throat> go to about the barb of the hook And then once you get it up there, I just like to go crazy and kind of make all kind of crisscross wraps to kind of roughen up the shank of that hook so the foam doesn't spin on it. Uh, actually, a company, and I don't, I don't know who it is, makes a hook for this purpose that like, just like the popper hooks that are kinked, instead of the kink being vertical, it's horizontal. And it's made for the triangle bug. Uh, I don't have any of those, and this seems to work. Jay Stocker. Okay, and what is it? Oh, that was. What did you have tied on there? What did that, I have? Uh, was that your thread that came out there? Yeah. Well, that was my tag end I just cut off. Yeah. Okay. My thread is much smaller. Tell you what. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of uh, flash on it. I have some micro flash. I think it's like one one hundredth of an inch. It's very small. Um, if y'all want to do it, we can. Uh, but I, I put the smaller flash on there sometimes. Okay. Otherwise, just Will grab. You wrap it around the bottom. No, I'll put a little bit of flash. I'll put it first before the feathers. A lot of times, you know, I don't know what y'all's opinion is. You, 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 you'll, you'll put the, you'll put the, uh, the, the marabou on and then you put the flash down the side. And I'm thinking, okay, the fish is under it, looking up. Wouldn't it be better for that flash to be under the marabou? Yeah, just saying. My opinion. So. Anyway, I'm going to grab a, grab a hunk of marabou a little bit longer than the hook shank. And uh, as y'all know, the beauty of marabou, if it's too long, you can pinch it off to get it to the right length. You can't make it bigger, so. Twist your marabou. Make some loose wraps forward to add a little bit of density to the body. And don't go all the way forward with this. Stay about a hook eye behind the.
front of the hook. And once you got that, just make some wraps and kind of clean it up a little bit. To the back. Okay, can you pass me yeah. that? You want two burp? Uh, yeah, two. So you can just give, give everybody one piece. In case we tie a second one. Obviously, these are just some rubber legs that I, I barred myself. Yeah. All right. What I like to do about at this point, I'll put them a little bit behind the eye of the hook, make a loose wrap on top of it, two two wraps, and then cross over it. so that they sit on top of the hook, just like that. There you go. Now I haven't been doing it, but I, I, I like to put a lot of glue on mine. And uh, I would have put, uh, put glue on the hook shank uh, after I put the marabou and then put some on the uh, Put some on the rubber legs. Does every, every, did anybody have any cement? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is everybody up 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 there with me? Rich, you're gonna have to split your legs, okay? Because when you glue this thing together, you're gonna want some two 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 of them to face forward and two of them kind of angled back. Then we're going to take our take our phone and fold it. Fold your phone in half like that. Kind of squeeze the front. Then when you take it off and put it down, you can see there's a there's a crease, a line on it, and you can kind of eyeball that with a thumb, uh, toothpick or something uh, and push a hole through it, through and through, like that. Then you just put it over the eye of the, of the hook, like that. You can bring your, bring your thread back to the marabou at this time.
when everybody catches up, let me know. Everybody about caught up? All right. What I like to do, I'll take the bottom of this, just take my finger, kind of push it up toward the rear, and if you can reach and kind of pinch it like that, just to hold it a second, and get a wrap or two, loose wrap around it, then you can straighten it up with your, your fingers. Once you get it, you can go ahead and wrap, a, make a few more tighter wraps. Okay. At this time, you want to make sure it's horizontal to the uh, the foam is horizontal to the surface of the table. Did you punch a hole in it before? You yes. It in? Yes. Get your glue out. You need some super glue, and uh, brush on glue is probably the best for this. Uh, and just put a little glue. Try to get it covering the the foam. Not too. You don't want it too much. You don't want it dripping out the sides when you squeeze it together. But just a light coating of super glue. Once you get your glue on there. Top over to the back. Make a couple of loose wraps with your thread. All right. And then at this point, you can kind of arrange your your legs the way you want it before you squeeze it. You want the two rear legs kind of facing back and the front legs kind of kind of square to the shoulders of the fly at the front. Just kind of mash it together. Doesn't take long, it's it's stuck. Then once you get that, just make a few more tight wraps and a whip finish, which can be tend to be a problem with those legs in a way, but they usually jump out your way if you That's it, C2. And like I say, if you don't like the length of your tail, you can pinch it off with your fingernails to the right length. Now you can imagine that once you do this a couple of times, if you have all the materials ready to go, Two minutes, easy. You know, and they work, right, Catch? Mm -hmm. 
behind the, the foam together? Yes. Have you tried any other uh, types of epoxy or glue? Um, no, because the only other the only other types I have that I think would work, or they don't adhe adhere that quickly. So you'd have to probably take a clothespin or something and you know to mash it, and I think it might malform the the foam, you know, when it dries. Mm -hmm. You could take like shoe goo and add a little xylene to it to thin it. That, that would work. But you'd be sitting there for forever holding it. Yeah. And when when you fish when you fish them, you're using a, a monofilament leader. Yes. Have you tried a fluorocarbon leader? No. Because it'll it'll cut, go it'll pull it under and then it comes back up. I think it's a pretty neat little fly. I've only caught a few fish on it, but where 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 I go, sometimes all they have is small fish, and they can't they can't even get their mouth around a a beetle. But they seem to be able to manage to get this. And you catch a fish that big. We got a panfish on the fly. That says this is supposed to prevent a swallow. Yes. Or we're going to catch some brown bass. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a a yeah. Right. <clears throat> the way to solve that problem is catch them big enough that your finger will fit in their mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Y'all want to do another one of these? Or you, it's up to you. You know, keep keep the. I, I, you know, as far as the hook, I don't know. Uh, these are the hooks I had some, from Arvis. I don't know of uh, no, comparable uh, other brands. You know the the numbers that of the of the hook, but uh, these seem to work fine. The the length of them. It says two X long. They seem to be longer than that. You know. And again, the pattern on the on the internet shows, it says four X. You know. So I don't know. I like these. These work. Is it a 12 foot? It's a 10. It's a 10. Yes, sir. Can you pass some of these out? Yeah. Hold on. Let's see. I got one on mine. This, this is a different hook. Oh, okay. He likes one side and one on the other. What, what, is your, what is your guys' opinion on the length of the tail? Uh, like a little bit longer than what I did would be better? Or? That's what I'm saying. You tie it, yeah. tie it with a long tail. You can always shorten it. You know? And and again, uh, if you put a little bit of flash on the bottom of it, uh, I can't see where that would hurt. That'll keep the marabou from fouling. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever tied some? I've seen a few of the saltwater flies and stuff that they tend to tie. They take some flash. Put it on the back, right below where they're going to have their tail, and they put UV resin and hit it with resin for just yeah. like a small one hit. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That seems to work really well. Why don't you take that and cut it in half? All right. Take that and cut, cut it in half. Cut it in yeah, it was, it was three out of yeah, that's what we're going to have plenty of 
more if we need it, but it's not cut that wire. You got a scissors cut that for me? And you can take that. What was the people we're using just now? That's this one right here? This one? Yeah. Okay, I found it. Yeah, this, this, the next fly we're going to tie, if you look, this is uh, Jack Hartford's house fly. And if you, if you notice, the, the green foam, I think that's one millimeter foam. The black foam is two millimeter, and that would make it easier to tie this fly. Uh, it, but I didn't have any one millimeter, so that's what we're going to use, is what we got. Okay. Um, as usual, with, with most of these foam patterns, I, th I think y'all would agree that they, when they say to cut the foam, uh, maybe the, the width of the hook gap, or maybe a little bit bigger, you know. And as a rule, you see that on all foam, a lot of foam patterns, they'll say the same thing. So I cut it. If you think it's a little too big and you want to cut it a little more, go ahead. Uh, I like it to be a little bit bigger. You can always take some off when you're doing the head. You know? So let's start about two hook eyes behind the, the eye of the hook. And that, that hook, by the way, is a size 10 dry fly hook. It's a mustad. Mustad R30 94833. 2X long. Um, so I have tied them on these uh, scud hooks. This is a size 10. Uh, I've tied them 14 uh, and, and bigger. I didn't want to go too small, I didn't want to go too big for ease of time. Okay. And bring your thread a little bit down the shank of the, uh, the curve of the hook and then go back forward. And stop about two eyes behind the, uh, the two eye widths behind the eye of your hook. Okay. Then I want to take my foam. Let's see. Okay. Kind of cut a point on it like that. And I'll, I also will take my scissors and I'll kind of cut like on an angle like this. Can you see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Just to kind of make it a little bit narrower in sure, the front. Sure. Let's see. I'll cut. Yeah, exactly. Just a little bit, because again, if the if I had one millimeter foam, in my case, this green foam would be one millimeter. It wouldn't be quite as thick. And when I when I do the foam, I like to put some cement on the thread keep it from rolling around on there. Okay. All right. Put the head of the, uh, the end of your foam right there. Just catch it with a couple of wraps. All right. And then let it go. Now, when you make these wraps going to the back, which in essence you're trying to make like body segments, 
And when you wrap, you want to always wrap. Let's see, can you see this? All right. I'm going to go over the top, make one segment. Okay, make a few wraps, three or four wraps. Over the top, make another segment. Three or four wraps over the top. Make a third segment. Three or four wraps over the top. And make sure you wrap through the same thread path. And I might even make one real small one on the back here. All right. So once you get those body segments in there. and you want to go forward, remember, keep your thread on top. Hey, hold on, hold on. In other words, you don't, when you turn the fly over, you prefer not to see any cross wraps. Everything will be in those body segments. All your cross wraps will be on the top, which will be hidden. Okay. So when you go forward, you're going to go into the first body segment wrap, go across the top to the next one, go across the top to the next one, across the top to the next one, and then back to the front. So you shouldn't have any cross wraps underneath. Did I confuse y'all? Does that make sense? All right. All right. Yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of super glue and put on top of the. Uh, Oh, you know, I didn't tell you all to put the black down, but I see that you did. Okay. Put a little super glue on top of the orange or the green or whatever color foam you have. Bring your piece of foam over. Kind of pull it to the front, but not too hard. Maybe use your thumb a little bit back here. And then hold it in place and make one, two loose wraps. Tug on it just a little bit, then you can start making a few more wraps to tighten it up. And when you do that, you want to have those two hook eyes still exposed in the front here. Uh, take take uh, two two of those. Two of those. Five. Yeah. There's only two two legs there, so take take a total of four legs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here, the, this there's four here, so. How many more we need? We need a total of four legs each, two for each side. Does there ever... two more legs? Separate them. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and separate them. We don't need them right now. We haven't. We got to finish the head, but might as well get that ready. Okay. All right. 
Now at this point what you're going to do is bring your bring the foam back and then wrap your thread forward to just behind your hook eye. Put a dab, I like to put a dab of a cement on the thread. Be careful you don't clog your, your hook eye when you do that. Okay, then you want to kind of squeeze this with your thumb and your forefinger as you get ready to, to put a wrap around it to try to keep it on top of the hook shank and it'll stay on top if you can if you have to you can twist it back a little bit to get it right okay Right up the eye. Right the eye. Yeah, right behind the eye. You put, bring your thread all the way to right behind the eye. Now you can put, you can put a little bit of uh, super glue on the uh, thread wraps right here before you bring the head, the foam down to make the head. Did you make your head? Did you make your head? Yeah, I got my head. You got your head? All right. Rich, you, you catch it up? You got your head on? I think so. All right. All right, now, what I want to do is take a little bit of dab of super glue. Just put a little bit right on top of here. Not a lot, just a tiny dab. Roll your foam back. Kind of use your thumb to push it. You don't want to pull it too hard. Oh, I'm sorry. Bring your thread across the top. Bring it into that behind your head. Okay. Roll your foam back. A couple of loose wraps. And then tighten it up. Sometimes if I feel feel like it, I'll take a uh, I'll take one of these monofilament eyes and put it in here before I roll my phone back from my head. Kind of like printer to fly. Yes, like that uh, the one we tied a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And once you get it, you can cut this wing to length. I don't like it to be too long. I think it'd probably make the fly a little top heavy. So I'm going to cut mine off about like that. Okay. And then, if I can get my... I'm going to take my scissors and come down the center of it. Like that. Uh, a little bit less, maybe. Not much, but a little bit less. <laughs> if you look, if, if you look at it, the, the the wing on mine is about half of the thorax length, half the length of the thorax. Usually when you cut it, it'll splay open, I guess because of the pressure of the thread. And I'll usually take my scissors and I'll try to bevel this a little bit, get a little bit of that foam off, a little bit of extra weight. And then I'll take, and you can cut, a, cut an angle on there, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. 
out like that. I'm going to grab two legs on each side and just put them in position. Let's see if I'm doing that right. Yeah. A couple of wraps. Right, once you get them on, I mean, there's, there's a lot there. You don't need all all the, the leg length that I, I believe that I gave you. So you're going to be cutting off a bunch, but in, in my case, I'm just putting them about even on each side and then I'll trim them once I, once I finish. Make a couple of more thread wraps and then go ahead and whip finish. I think I have white, black, yellow, and orange. And I just grabbed some orange and white and yellow tonight. Uh, you know, I really think some just totally black legs would look good. And these are medium legs, by the way. I didn't have any small. They didn't. They, for some reason, they didn't have a lot of uh, small for sale. They were out of stock. One last time I ordered. I don't, I don't know why, but uh, small might work better on this. And once you get your whip finish done, I'm just going to grab the legs and kind of pull them forward. Cut them, cut them, cut them to length. The, the, actually, the guy that, uh, if you look at the video, the guy says you want to make a beetle or a spider when you're cutting your legs up to you you know same with the back I'll just make them about like that I guess that's a spider I don't know and get through take a little dab of super glue with your bodkin or whatever you have and put it over the the legs on each side and uh, the bottom in my case where I finished up my uh, whip finish. They got eight legs, they're all spiders, right? Exactly. Again. Now what did you do? Did you, oh, okay, I, I, I just turned it upside down. It looked like you had clipped a little bit of the uh, the um, green and made an eye. Uh, you no. Didn't, you didn't. It was upside down. No. Um, you imagine if you had all these materials at hand ready to go, again, you can tie these things in two minutes. You know? um, I've got them. <clears throat> I think these are size six. Size 14. I didn't try a 16. Got a whole bunch of variations here. Here's one I put a little bit of flash on the tail and a pair of pair of those. Those little plastic eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So much you can do with this stuff. How did you do the whip finish? 